Right now, President Obama is challenging Republicans in the Senate to give Judge Merrick Garland a hearing and an up or down vote. He is a longtime federal appeals court judge who's built a reputation as a consensus builder. In announcing the nomination this morning, President Obama said he chose a serious man and it's time for the Senate to get serious about the nation's business. At a time when our politics are so polarized, at a time when norms and customs of political rhetoric and courtesy and comedy are so often treated like they're disposable, this is precisely the time when we should play it straight and treat the process of appointing a Supreme Court justice with the seriousness and care it deserves. I'm joined by our legal panel. Wendy Patrick is a trial attorney and veteran prosecutor. Brian Claypool, a defense attorney. Wendy, to you first, Judge Antonin Scalia, obviously a, a, a hero to conservatives. He called himself a strict constitutionalist. Is Judge Merrick Garland that same man? He's not that same man, John, but you raise a good point. He's not the polar opposite anti-Scalia that many were predicting President Obama was going to nominate. In other words, he's far more moderate than some of the <coughs> nominees that President Obama could have selected. But here's the thing. What we normally would be doing is if, in fact, this was a nominee that the Senate was going to consider, he has spent 19 years on the Court of Appeal. In other words, there's lots of material to work with in order to vet this judge to tell whether or not he's a good candidate. But you just heard what the GOP leaders have said. They're not going to consider him. So they're not even going to look through those 19 years, which I might point out have been characterized as non-controversial. Although, remember, there's also some soft on the Second Amendment opinions out there. But none of that is even going to matter if they're not even going to give Judge Garland a hearing. He does uh, strike people as a tough law and order kind of judge, Brian. What else do you see in his resume, his background? Well, John, we, we live in a, a society now filled with terrorism, with, 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 with threats of danger on a daily basis. And what you have with Merrick Garland is, is a man who left his job, a high paying private job, to go work under George H. Bush as a federal prosecutor to prosecute violent crime. He took on the Oklahoma City bombing case. He took on the Unabomber case. He is not reluctant to try cases and seek the death penalty when it's warranted, John. And the message that Obama is sending to the Senate is, look, I've picked a guy in the middle. I've picked a moderate. I've picked a guy who is going to hold criminals accountable. And I will tell you that there's going to be some serious political repercussions for the Republican Party if Mitch McConnell lives by his word today and says we're not going to hold hearings. This is playground politics. And Heather put up those exit polls a few minutes ago, John, you saw it. All five states yesterday, people are, are upset, they're fed up, they're betrayed by the federal government, they feel betrayed, and but if the Senate's not even going to hold hearings, this is going to have a detrimental effect on, on the Republican candidate getting elected. Brian, as you say that, I mean, you're talking about a federal government that's been led by the Democratic uh, member, uh, the, the Democratic uh, Democrat in the White House. You know, yeah, there's a couple John, of things at play. Lot, lot. Hold on, Wendy. Just, just, just okay. consider that for yeah. a second, Brian. John. I mean, the, the, the president's sure. a Democrat. Right. He's been running the, uh, the administration for seven years. Right, but the problem is, that, and, and by the way, I'm a registered Republican. I'm a Trump advocate, but I listened to John Kasich. <laughs> you heard John Kasich's speech last night. He talked about, we all need to live for a purpose above us. The nurses working hard, the teachers working hard with kids when they're tired. But what about, what about the Republican Senate who has dra they, they dragged their feet on trying to at least have a colloquy with, the, with Obama to create legislation, immigration legislation, gun control legislation. So I, I really think the Republican Party has to take a close look at this. If they take Obama's bait, this could be a fatal blow in the general election. Yeah, I'm just saying that I'm not sure that all of the um, animus toward Washington, you know, falls necessarily on the U.S. Senate. I mean, Wendy, you know, the president said we've got to stop the scorched earth politics. And, you know, it's the president who has compared uh, some of his political opponents to the Iranian terrorists. Oh, 
<laughs> you know, John, this raises so many raw issues, doesn't it? I mean, here we are again where there's really a policy dispute at whether or not this man would be acceptable to either side. Remember, it's not the first time he's been nominated. Is an issue almost separate and apart from what we're arguing over, which is whether or not they're even going to consider a nominee until the next president is sworn in. All the issues are sort of getting conflated. I mean, the bottom line here is Lady Justice is blind, but jurists are not. So both sides have a vested interest in making sure that the next nominee is somebody they can live with because we've got an empty chair on the yeah. Supreme Court. Well, now, while it's yeah. true the Supreme Court is not plagued with 5-4 decisions, nonetheless, it would be nice to get that vacated, uh, nice to get that, that uh, vacancy filled. Nonetheless, John, you heard the, the Republican leadership is steadfast even after today's nominee. January is going to be here before we know it. I yeah. don't expect they're going to yeah. reverse course most, and decide to most, give this man a hearing. Most, as you well know, most most of the very controversial decisions, though, from the court do come down as 5-4. That's and, a very that, good point, John, a very good point. And one of the points that's being raised as to what are we going to consider between now and then that actually might come down 5-4. Good point. All right. Uh, Wendy and Brian, we're going to have to say goodbye. Uh, we will see, obviously, what happens with this nomination and uh, whether Judge Garland does get a Senate hearing. Thank you both. Brian Claypool. Wendy Thanks, Patrick. John. Thanks, John.